Alrighty, so the game is officially down for maintenance, and uh, I've been wanting to do the news all week, but uh, there's been a lot of confusion with the news this week. I knew it wasn't going to be coming out on Sunday because the patch wasn't until Thursday. I originally thought it was going to be coming out Thursday morning, so I figured that the news would drop on uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning because uh, that would be about the normal time that they would do it for a global patch, but <laughs> I guess not. Um, they're basically, it's basically going to be a patch, or like a, it's basically going to be coming out for the 7th, but they're saying it's the 6th, which I, I get, it's whatever, it's just, it was just a whole lot of confusion. I really didn't understand why they did it this way. It would have been really nice if they would have gave out any sort of info on when it was actually going to be dropping uh, so that way people could sort of prepare or just know it just in hindsight I guess but either way it is what it is so there's obviously a lot to go over here uh, they split it into two different notes I think one of the, uh, one of the notes is going over the banner itself and we'll look at that one after this one is going over the festival events and stuff like that so the obviously the new characters coming out trader meliotis very very good character uh, he's going to be really really interesting because he's the first unit to ever get a brand new typing which is dark type uh apparently the, the light type is already basically in the game uh we just don't know what it's going to do and there's no units that are light type yet so i'm assuming there's probably going to be either a light type during the half festival banner so that like two weeks after he launches um there will probably be another banner with either the light unit then or they'll just save the light unit for another festival sometime soonish people were saying that the one or the two-year anniversary for global is at the end of february um so it they could potentially wait till the end of february i don't know if they'll wait that long but uh i don't know i just assume that it's going to be sometime soon because i don't know why you would you know uh, have it already in the game and everything like that and then not have a unit assigned to it i guess but the banner itself is actually really cool. Um, it's They're kind of like doing a new thing where they're sort of merging Holy War Festival and regular festival characters onto one banner. And I got to say that the, the lineup for this one is pretty strong. So, I mean, you've got Goddess Elizabeth on here who is, you know, she's not been on a banner in a long time. You've got Festival Gother who's relatively new and people, you know, could definitely use extra copies of or just get in general because he's a really good support unit. Um, Cusack is honestly really, really strong. Uh, he's just really good for like one shot teams and stuff like that. And he's good in, you know, certain scenarios and stuff like that. And then Margaret is still really, really good. So, I mean, the, the, the extra units on this lineup are really, really good. So I think the banner is going to have a, a lot of value there. Uh, if you pull the units that are not the festival units on here, they're actually going to be already level 80 fully uh, fully awakened, not super awakened. Uh, whenever you pull them, which is nice, if you already got them above that, it's obviously not going to do anything for them. It's just going to give you the coin. But if you uh, say you already have one of the characters on there, but they're not powered up all the way, it's going to go ahead and power them up and give you the coin for it and everything, which is going to be really nice. It is, of course, a 900 mileage banner because all the festivals are. <laughs> and uh, another thing to note is that this new Meliodas, because he's a dark type, he actually does have a dark festival coin, which is a brand new thing. That makes me think that a lot of the the dark type and light type units are probably going to have their own coins and they're probably going to be festival exclusive units. Like I don't think that uh, they're just going to have regular new SSRs and stuff like that come out that are going to be dark and light type uh, because I would imagine the light type units are probably going to get their own coins as well. I don't know why they wouldn't, but um, the fact that he has a brand new type of coin, it's not just a regular festival coin, but it's a dark festival coin leads me to believe that, you know, there will be, dark festival units coming out in the future that you can potentially trade his coins in for or just whoever so <laughs> i don't know kind of interesting i'm not really sure how that's going to play out yet but uh we will see as it goes on um the dark typing itself has its own effect which is really really interesting um it obviously makes it better than you know the regular attributes which is a little concerning to me as far as balancing goes but we'll see how it plays out whenever they introduce light but the uh the dark type effect is Setting a darkness attribute hero to the team increases allies damage dealt uh, by 10% to characters with attributes that are strong against your allies. So, you know, you do extra, say you have a blue unit, they're going to do 10% extra damage against green units is from what I'm understanding from that, which is pretty good. So you basically will be type neutral at that point because I'm pretty sure the type advantage modifier is 10% if I'm not mistaken. Um... 
So yeah, that's pretty interesting. Plus, increases damage dealt to enemies of other or any other attribute by 10%, and that's for the darkness type itself. So <laughs> the darkness units basically just have type advantage for all of the other characters except for dark types. So very, very interesting. <laughs> Uh, and I assume that the way that this is worded, it'll play against light types as well. I'm assuming because this one is such an aggressive passive or like an offensive passive that the light typing will maybe be a little bit more of like a supporty role um, where maybe the effect on that one will have something to do with like helping your, you know, team take less damage or something along those lines, which could be pretty interesting. So uh, really quickly, some of, some of the, uh, the, like the red text here is actually kind of interesting. So the darkness attribute um, does not have an attribute leverage with other previous previously featured attributes. When they put it like that with previously featured attributes, that makes me think that light type may end up doing more damage to it. Uh, we'll just have to see, I guess. Uh, the darkness attribute can participate in any hell difficulty death matches. So any of the raids, you will be able to use uh, Meliodas on your team now, which is pretty interesting. I think that that's kind of a cool mechanic. I don't necessarily know that he's going to be like the unit that you want on some of those, because honestly, if I'm being, you know, <laughs> if I'm just saying it how it is, most of the uh, hell demons pretty much already have their team sort of cemented, uh, except for maybe Belmoth, just because Belmoth doesn't really have a whole lot of really good green units to like damage deal. Um, obviously, there's a couple of them that people use and stuff like that, but we could always use a, a a good heavy green hitter um which could potentially be good in the future but i mean if the i'll try it out honestly and i kind of want to see if he'll be a, like a good unit to use on the the belmoth team but uh i might try to see if i, I can main this new meliotis on the belmoth team could be kind of cool um, after acquiring a darkness hero for the first time, you will receive a darkness festival coin onwards. So they do have their own festival coins, which is what I was just talking about, which is really interesting. Um, seven darkness essence uh, items, or se yeah, seven darkness essence items will be uh, added to the knighthood shop. I'm pretty sure that's something to do with you having to power them up, maybe, or something along those lines. I don't know. I'll have to actually look at that one when we get in the game. Um, darkness grim wars which are the books will be used to uh or for darkness attributes uh heroes evolution slash limit break strength hp and speed grimoires can be exchanged for darkness grimoires at the darkness attribute heroes evolution slash limit break screen so this is kind of important you can't just go like to king for example and get him to exchange them using like his exchange service thing you have to actually have a darkness hero uh and go to their like limit break or evolution screen and click on the little button there and it's a three for one um transfer so you'd have to get you could put either one of each of these or three of one or two of one and one of another um to transfer it for one of the darkness books so he's a little bit more expensive to level up um so yeah if you need to make sure that you're farming some of the books and stuff like that so that way you can level him up because i know that me personally i don't sit on a whole lot of those books to be honest especially the like higher tier ones i normally just transfer them as i need them so <laughs> it is what it is i guess uh new content they're coming out with chapter 22 so if you've already completed all through chapter 21 you're like completely caught up with the story as soon as this patch drops you will be able to acquire 30 diamonds for the uh chapter 21 rewards so make sure you do that whenever the patch drops um, you're now going to be able to filter through the seven deadly sins as a characteristic in the like in your like character box so now because there's so many different <laughs> seven deadly sins units you'll be able to just search through those specifically if it'll help you find what character you're looking for i guess easier uh, there is a new Cardifact art, or an Artifact card set, not Cardifact art, uh, Artifact card set, which is going to be using this new, the one Escanor card, along with, I'm pretty sure these two cards are new as well, um, and I think these have been in the game, but I'm pretty sure they will be giving out the card packs that will contain each of these cards throughout the events that are going to be going on during this whole festival thing, so don't worry about that, but uh, it's really interesting because this one Escanor card is actually a UR card whereas the only ur card that was in the game up until this point was the like chicken the cluximus like monster card which was kind of interesting it wasn't really particularly all that good it's still kind of rare because of the drop chance on it but uh yeah there's actually a ur card set now 
it tells you what uh, what events you're going to be using to get these, which is kind of nice. And then the card uh, set itself at max level is decreases the seven deadly sins allies damage taken from enemies by 10%, which is pretty, pretty good. <laughs> I mean, that's a 10% damage reduction if they're a seven deadly sin. So pretty, pretty solid, honestly. Um, obviously, Melly's getting his three outfits, which is normal. I mean, you might have already seen him by now if you watch any sort of YouTube or anything like that. A lot of the Japanese players have already shown off all of this kind of stuff, but I think his outfits look pretty cool. Not a huge fan of this one. The sword's kind of cool in itself, but um, I don't know. They're, they're pretty cool. I was really excited to see Melly with a sword and see what kind of cool cosmetics they give him, but uh, I think uh, things they did a pretty good job. I think the lineup here looks pretty solid, and uh, looking forward to see seeing what kind of, I would assume it's his third or his next outfit set is probably going to be some sort of seasonal outfit because they normally end up doing that nowadays, uh, or it may end up being a Hawk Pass like Chef's outfit. Who knows? So... Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, you will be able to get these I assume after you know after two weeks You'll be able to buy these with gems instead of just paying money for them like they always do So keep that in mind uh, the coin shop is actually gonna be really interesting because this banner has so many festival characters on it um, And some of them are kind of older ish not I mean maybe uh, Goddess Liz is really the only like really old one um, Margaret and Cusack have been out for a little while But I would assume unless you have them maxed out you probably want to feed the dupe for those but but the actual coin shop itself is going to have every single festival unit except for um, the new festival king uh, able to be traded for, which is really, really good. <laughs> I mean, obviously, like, you know, if you need any of these units, feel free to grab them if you have the extra coins and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty solid there. Obviously, there's going to be a diamond shop thing going on, so you can buy diamonds and get uh, tickets for the new banner. They pretty much do that every single time. There's going to be new bundles coming out that are, I guess, like special edition uh, New Year's bundles. So depending on the price of those, you can make your own educated guess on whether or not you should buy them or not. Because obviously, um, <laughs> a lot of the stuff in this game is very expensive sometimes, like very overpriced. So be careful. Um, there's a couple of new uh, Holy Relic bundles, which are you know, honestly just terrible value. <laughs> they just I just hate these so much. They don't even give you enough to buy or to make like one singular Holy Relic. You can you can literally buy both of these and you won't get enough wind sources to make one Holy Relic, which is kind of ridiculous. But it is what it is. Uh, buy them if you want, I guess. Uh, they're doing more selector bundles where you actually get to choose uh, the three rewards that you get I think these are kind of interesting But um, I don't think I've ever actually been enticed enough to buy them because a lot of these materials you can just get by playing the game So I don't ever think that the value is really there for that uh, It looks like there's another small Rosvelger bundle like a very um, I don't know. You don't get a whole lot of the materials here. I'm assuming this one's going to be a lot cheaper, but you do get blue stones, which I mean, you can, you can literally farm all of this stuff in the game. I wouldn't really recommend buying this unless you just really want holy relics or something. Uh, system updates added returning player missions. So if you haven't played the game in a long time and you log in, you'll get some new missions and stuff like that for free rewards, which is cool. Uh, there is a check-in reward hero change now. So you can basically click this little icon in the bottom right whenever Elizabeth gives you your daily rewards. Um, and you can actually choose between the first four heroes are going to be uh, Normal Elizabeth, Lilia, Derriere, and Monspeed, which is actually kind of cool. I like that they added Monspeed because Monspeed's a cool character. I don't care what you say. But uh, yeah, I'll probably go with Derriere just because I like Derriere a lot. But uh, yeah, it'll change the character. Obviously, <laughs> they don't stay there. They end up changing back into Elizabeth once the rewards are given, which is kind of lame, but it is what it is. Obviously, like Elizabeth is just part of the tavern, uh, so, you know, she'll be there. But anyway... Improved uh, browsing heroes in set team. You will now uh, you will now view only the heroes you've selected when browsing selected heroes in set team. So that's kind of interesting, I guess. Uh, they also added this thing where you can see the character skills and stuff like that in the bottom right, which is actually kind of helpful because I know a lot of the times when you click on characters, um, especially with graces and commandments and stuff like that, sometimes it's hard to see uh, those things or it'll only show you the passive or whatever the case may be. Uh, so you should be able to look at all of that info now when you click on a character when selecting them on a team, which is kind of cool. 
um, improved display of hero coins. Uh, now, if you're exchanging stuff in the coin shop, you'll actually be able to see whether or not those coins are for characters that you've completely maxed out their ultimate level or not. So that way you can make sure that you're not spending coins that you could be giving to characters, which is kind of nice, like just a nice little quality of life thing. Uh, they're moving the rates button onto the actual item itself for some of these things. So nothing too crazy there. Uh, it looks like they're changing some of the text around to, I guess, help clarify things. Um, what is this one? In the Seven Deadly Sins draw, all SSR heroes, including Raid Up heroes, will now display the change in their drop rates from before and during the event. So I guess now you'll see how much better of a chance it is to get the unit now, which is kind of interesting. Um, improved the effect description for the artifact card set bonus number eight visal fight festival uh, previously it was decreases allies damage taken from the ultimate move by blank percent uh, in pvp now it says that it's in pvp fight festival elite uh, i guess so that's cool i guess uh, <laughs> improved bundle description i guess they're just adding a lot of like extra text and stuff like that for some of those things to make sure that you know exactly what you're getting into uh improve the attribute requirement for hell difficulty in death matches so now you can see like you it tells you that you can only use either blue units or darkness units for hell which is kind of interesting kind of cool uh so that's good i guess there's also going to be a new login event you're getting three diamonds a day for 14 days uh which is pretty solid i mean you free diamonds are free diamonds so make sure you're logging in over the next two weeks um new year costume set there's already a lot of controversy around this one because they're actually screwing us a little bit on the costume time uh ours starts on 1 6 which is today whenever the patch drops and it ends on 124, which is roughly like three weeks from now. Uh, whereas the JP and Korea versions of the game got a four week like discount. So we're losing a week for some reason on this. I have no idea why they're doing it like that. Uh, or if they even know that they're doing it like that, I would assume they do, but, uh, that's kind of, kind of stupid. I don't know why you would like cut a week off of hours for no reason at all. Like, so this, the, the costume bundles, like a discount event is going to be, ending before the festival itself is even over with which is kind of dumb so make sure i guess if you're gonna buy costumes uh do it sooner rather than later so that way you don't i guess miss out on it so that's really dumb uh, it looks like they're bringing back the costume sets for some of the New Year's heroes. Uh, they're bringing back the ice sets for Escanor and the original Merlin. Uh, they're bringing back the fantasy set for a lot of the festival, like the original festival characters. And this one for Deanne because she still doesn't have a festival character. Um, the fantasy set too. I, I think I only have the <laughs> the Gother set here because I kind of like the way that it looked. Uh, I actually like the Bond one, but nobody ever uses Nunchuck Bond really. And the rest of them I already have the cosmetics that I needed for uh, and then they're bringing back some of the festival summer bundles which are kind of cool so you can get those cosmetics if you need them while the sales going on um, here's the actual discount itself you can see that uh, the UR cosmetics are going from 30 to 20 SSRs are going from 20 to 15 and then SR cosmetics are 10 to 7 so now is gonna be a really good time to buy cosmetics if you need them just because they don't do these uh, sales all that often uh, the missions themselves for the uh, Meliodas tickets, and you'll be able to get 10 diamonds once you finish them all, are exchange three times with the king, uh, use the event boss exchange shop five times because there's going to be the, um, what's his name, like the big blue guy who looks kind of like, his face looks kind of like Galland in my opinion, and he has like the weird like colorful beads as the arm. He's the boss that's coming back, so you need to use the exchange shop for him five times to get this one done. Use the or get bingo ten times. That's not just like you play bingo ten times. It's you have to get bingo, which means you basically need to finish your first scorecard um, in the bingo event to get this one done. Draw heroes three times, and then clear the Fort Solgris reward dungeon two times. So you should potentially be able to get all of these rewards uh, within two days of the event if you're actually like min maxing and getting all of the things you can. Um, but yeah, I guess it's just going to take a little bit of luck whether or not you get the bingo stuff because, you know, you can just pull a lot of the same numbers on bingo, but it is what it is. Um, there is a Fort, uh, Fort Solgris dungeon or a special dungeon or whatever. We, I mean, literally the King banner is going away tomorrow. So we're still doing a <laughs> Fort Solgris reward dungeon for that right now. Um, 
and I'm pretty sure because the patch is dropping early, you might actually be able to get uh, a extra run in on this because it's dropping today instead of after the daily reset. So make sure you do that if you want to. Um, drop rewards for the stage are these, I assume. <laughs> kind of weird. Like orange or a dungeon. I'm not really sure what these are. Gold box, silver box. I don't know. I'm assuming one of the monsters will randomly appear. Oh, okay. So it's not going to be like a set monster, I guess, depending on which monster you get in the, 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 the reward dungeon. You get a certain reward for it. Kind of interesting. I don't think they've done that before. Uh, here's the exchange shop for the big blue man guy, bowling pin dude. <laughs> I don't know what to call him. I forgot what his name is. Uh, Oboru. Ab Aburu whatever <laughs> uh, but yeah you get two of the card packs uh, you get an SSR ticket which is kind of nice couple of pendants couple of super awakening coins which is good cosmetic upgrades all of that stuff's really nice uh, after you beat him a total of 20 times you'll unlock all of these rewards which is really good um, there's some details uh, you can clear uh, without daily limit, which is good. So you can basically just <laughs> steamroll this man 20 times in a row if you want to. I'm glad they've been doing that. But know that the exchange shop itself has a limit on some of the stuff. Uh, so I'm assuming you can only buy some of these like X amount of times per day. So if you really want to, you can just get it over with and run all of it at one time and then just make sure you're buying out the exchange shop each day so that way you don't miss out on stuff. That's normally what I try to do if I can. Um, all four heroes participate in the battle from the beginning. Uh, yeah, pretty standard stuff. Goodbye 2021 bingo event. Here are the rewards for the bingo event. You're actually getting um, blue New Year's Jericho right off the bat from this one. Or not right off the bat, but on the seventh round. Uh, once you complete it, you actually get this hero, which is kind of nice, I guess. I'll probably just use her as a coin, to be honest, because <laughs> I don't use her and she, I don't need CC on her or anything like that. So I guess that's cool. Uh, you get her for free, though. So if you don't have her, that's all. that's a huge win. And uh, yeah, here's the bingo tickets. You can get them from Fort Solgris boss battle or event battles, um, or event boss battles, sorry. And then the regular tickets are from main stages, deathmatch, and knighthood boss battles. So very cool. You can also buy a couple of the exchange tickets from uh, the gold uh, coin shop, which is kind of nice. Uh, there's a couple of power up things going on. So main main quest free continue event. So if you lose on a main scenario quest, uh, you can actually get one retry for free, which is good. Uh, main and free stages are 50% stamina discount at the moment. Times two player XP. So with them adding level 90 not too long ago, <laughs> if you're not there yet or you just need to or you want to like level up yourself, uh, now's a good time to do it. Increase of the uh, hero enhance ultra and super success rate ups so when you're giving them potions and stuff like that to level up your characters uh, there's a higher chance that you'll get one of the better rates for that uh, there's also going to be an, a salvage event going on which is really good all of the village shops are going to be open <laughs> which is pretty good i mean there's just a lot going on i guess uh, Pop-up merchant asset and village shop discount uh, materials and equipment items are sold at 33% discounted price for each of the village and pop-up merchant asset um, material shops enhancement uh, materials and ingredients purchase limit is increased by two times now as that also so that's cool I mean <laughs> just a whole bunch of stuff that you can do pretty much uh, there's also going to be giving you five free daily skip tickets which is kind of nice they did this one with the king banner as well I'm not if I'm not mistaken uh, and these were honestly kind of helpful so kind of cool um, pretty neat two times patrol tickets so whenever you do your patrols you have a chance to get I think you just get two times the tickets from that so that's kind of cool um, New Year's 2022 Kings upgrade e material exchange event so um, he the for most of the uh, festivals and stuff like that they end up giving you uh, extra stuff that you can get from King you'll be able to transfer uh, demon materials for other demon materials uh, rare pendants for anvils or extra or like more rare pendants for some of the cosmetic upgrades which is good because I end up sitting on a lot of these I just get them from the uh, Fort Solgris dungeons and stuff like that uh, SSR pendants to SR, or SR pendants to SSR pendants uh, SR pendants to the um, full awakening tokens which isn't anything super crazy nowadays considering you can craft them but it is what it is um, SR pendants to super awakening coins, which is kind of nice. And then these are like a interchangeable thing where you can trade, um, two of the engraving stones or hammers for vice versa. Uh, you only get one in return. So it's a two for one exchange, uh, which is okay. I don't ever really use these ones to be honest. 
Uh, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> There's a Diamond Perks event going on as well. So if you spend up to 900 diamonds on the, Meli or the Meliodas banner, I would assume is going to be the one you're summoning for, uh, you'll end up getting uh, rewards in return for spending X amount of diamonds, which is just kind of another way for them to entice you to spend diamonds. <laughs> uh, the, Luffy, the Lucky Raffle Drum is going to be going on as well. They did one of these during the Assault Meliodas banner, and it ended really quickly because they put a set amount of rewards in which it looks like they're doing the same thing with this one too uh, so make sure you're doing this as much as possible because it's very possible that they'll run out of rewards in just a couple of days because they dealt last time which was really stupid but um, yeah the whole thing here is you'll be able to do three different things you'll be able to get one you'll get one ticket from checking in one from clearing a stage and one for sharing uh, your the game on social media basically but most of the time you can just end up clicking the button and then backing out and it still counts it uh, but yeah you can you can spend three times a day and you have a chance to win upwards of a thousand diamonds but obviously there's only 20 of those rewards out there so it's very very low chance to get it but uh yeah just a lot of a lot of diamond rewards which is really really good uh, a <laughs> couple of anvils and some auto clear tickets at the very bottom but uh yeah there's <laughs> this may seem like a lot of rewards but compared to the jp and korean versions of the game uh the global version just has a ton more players so it's very possible we just end up running through these in a very short amount of time which is kind of dumb that they do it like this with a set number of rewards instead of it just being like a two week long period where you can get three tickets a day or whatever but uh i don't i don't make the game so <laughs> it is what it is i guess um Oh, they're actually putting restrictions on it this time, which is really good because I think one of the big problems was people were just making new accounts and re-rolling them just to try to win diamonds and stuff. Uh, but they're actually, it says note, you can only participate when you have reached player rank eight. That seems like a really weird player rank to put, to put it on. Why wouldn't you just go ahead and do it at 10 or something? Uh, you cannot participate via the PC version, so you'll have to log in on your phone to do this, um, which is kind of troublesome to be honest, but it is what it is. Um, unused tickets will disappear as missions reset set daily at 11 p.m. PST. You can get up to three tickets a day. Uh, rewards will be sent to your inbox and expire after seven days. Remaining quantity of rewards will reset at every 10 minutes. What is that? Huh? Remaining quantity of rewards will reset at every 10 minutes. Reset. There may be difference in timing depending on the device. I'm assuming this means that it's going to update the quantity. I don't know. I don't know what it means by reset, but yeah, I guess there's a limit on it now, which is, or there's a, like a player limit, which is really good player rank limit. Uh, cause there was, there was a lot of debate on whether or not people were just like cheating and just re-rolling accounts like that. And I'm sure they were last time. So yeah, uh, hopefully this goes better than it did in the previous one, but, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, New Year's 2022 fortune telling event. This one's actually kind of cool because basically every time you log in uh, from today's update to the 13th, which I think is the next update, so just seven days, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you'll basically be able to um, pull like a little envelope thing at the very like start of your day, like whenever you log in for the first time per day, um, and you'll get either a small fortune, which is a diamond, or a uh, super awakening coin. You'll get a good fortune, which is either three diamonds or gold, which is really bad, uh, <laughs> or you'll get a great fortune, which is five diamonds that day, which is pretty cool, just extra stuff. Uh, there's going to be two new battle events, which is kind of nice, I guess. I mean, they, they give you two diamonds a piece which is cool. And then let's move on to the banner really quickly because this is already almost 30 minutes long. Uh, the banner itself is good. Uh, it's a 300, 600, 900 mileage banner. So the, you can actually choose between all of the festival heroes on the banner at 900, which is pretty interesting. They normally don't do it like that. So kind of cool. Um, festival banners are normally a 4% rate. Uh, it doesn't actually say it here, but it'll be a 4% chance to pull an SSR on these banners. And most of the time, I think these are all 0.25 or they're, I think it's 0.25 for these uh, festival characters. And then the rest of the lineup is this right here. So unfortunately there are a couple of coin shop characters in the banner, which I'm not super thrilled about. Of course, they just, they always end up putting them on there, which is really annoying, but uh, yeah, you get you can pull three of the or any three of the archangels, uh, Chandler, Elant's on here for some reason, Beliat's or Belion is on here for some reason. Uh, the the other two um, New Year's event units are on here as well, which is kind of odd considering that Jericho should be on here, but she's just a free reward instead. So I guess if you wanted extra copies of her, you can't go for it. 
but whatever. Uh, blue Droll is fine, I guess. Green Green Derriere, Green Esterosa, Red <laughs> Zeldris, Red uh, Demon Melee, Green Nunchuck Bon, and Red Gother, which all of those are Coin Shop units, so that kind of sucks. I wish they would leave Coin Shop units off the banner. But uh, yeah, the new Melee is pretty crazy. He uses an Amplify single target card and a Pierce uh, AoE card, which is pretty crazy. And his ultimate is removes buffs and stances from all enemies, then decreases all stats by 5% for two turns, inflicts cleave damage, which does non, uh, which does not result in critical strike uh, equal to 390% of attack, and uh, cleave does extra damage based on your crit damage. So obviously it scales up and everything. It's got a really clean, even scaling, which is also good. Uh, and then his passive is every every time allies use single target attack skills, all of the hero stats are increased by 6% for three turns, stacking up to five times. Uh, if two or more single target attack skills are used in, the, uh, in a single turn, allies damage taken from enemies decreases by 8%, stacking up to 40%, which is really, really strong. That's what makes him so good for the bird. Um, but yeah, he's really, really cool character character looking forward to him coming out obviously this was a really long video hopefully <laughs> you guys enjoyed it just a lot of info uh, i will be going live in just a few hours whenever the banner drops so i will hopefully see you guys there that is pretty much it for me thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed feel free to subscribe if you have not already and i will see you guys in the next one